Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.3.1 has been out for a couple weeks at this point and iOS 18.4 beta one released about a day or so ago. So we'll talk more about this in a future update soon. However, there's more to talk about since the iOS 18.3.1 is out. What's new video. We'll talk about the overall experience as I used it full time on the iPhone 16 plus and 16 pro max and iPad pro. And we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 30 13,000 votes and 226 comments. I've gone through all the comments to see what the experience is like with battery and more. So be sure to stick around where we'll read some of those comments toward the end of the video. Now, Apple's new find my app or update for the app. Rather, if we go into find my, if you have something like an air tag attached to a bag and you're traveling, there's the new option for lost air tag where you can show contact info or share the item location. You can now share it with an airline or different people. And now more airlines are signing up this week. American airlines signed up. So that's the largest in the U S and it looks like just about every airline in the U S is accepting this or any of the major ones so far. Maybe some of the smaller regional ones aren't yet, but this is great if you need to locate a bag and you're not able to easily do that. If you're in the EU or European Union or an area that allows third party app stores or side loading of apps, a new app store is now available called Aptoid. The thing that's different about this is it allows installations of older versions of games. So I'll link it in the description. You can install this again if you're outside the US in an area that allows side loading of apps. Now, if you use Spotify, it's getting ready to launch a premium tier with high quality audio and AI features. We've had high quality audio in the music app for some time, but for whatever reason, we don't have it yet in Spotify. So that should be available fairly soon. Now this week, the latest iPhone 16 E introduced has something no other iPhone has with its new Apple made C1 modem. Later this year, we should see Apple introduce its own Wi-Fi chipset as well in the iPhone 17 lineup. This will help it save additional power as the iPhone 16 E supposedly has more battery life than the regular iPhone 16 by about four hours. Of course, we'll have to test that out and see if that's true, but with a Wi-Fi chipset, maybe that will make the iPhone air possible that we'll talk about in a little bit. As far as new features, well, the iPhone 16 E update doesn't have a camera control button. However, it allows for visual intelligence using the action button and Apple confirmed this feature is coming to a future update on the iPhone 15 pro. So if you have an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max with the action button, you'll be able to assign an action to the action button that allows for visual intelligence. We'll also have the option in the control center as well. Thanks to a viewer that sent this in where we'll have the option just to tap on that. We're not seeing that yet in the latest iOS 18.4 betas, but we should see that fairly soon. Now, as far as upcoming features, well, we know we've got quite a few with iOS 18.4. Apple went over quite a few of them as well in announcements today. So Apple intelligence is expanding to more languages and regions in April. That's the release of iOS 18.4 along with Apple intelligence coming to Apple vision pro in April, along with news plus food in the news app. So I showed this in the iOS 18.4 beta one is out what's new video. And there's a lot more to talk about with that probably in a future video as well, but something that's not in the update yet is new emoji. So we're expecting new emoji and maybe some stereo audio recording with screen recording, HDR video with that and picture in picture using the camera. We haven't seen those features yet, but they could be coming in iOS 18.4 betas fairly soon. However, Apple intelligence still doesn't have the Siri updates. Those have been pushed off to iOS 18.5. It seems so that's something that we'll have to wait for and we'll probably see in the near future. Now, every week I've been trying to share a new tip with you about iOS 18 and this week's tip has to do with photos. If we go into photos and we go to the bottom where we have utilities, if you don't have this enabled, you can go into customize and reorder and then enable utilities by enabling utilities and pinned collections. It makes it seem more like iOS 17. And within here, we now have the option if we swipe over to look for things just with handwriting in them. So we have things such as receipts, handwriting, illustrations, and QR codes. And if we go into handwriting, you can find things specifically with handwriting in them. So it found this where we have handwriting here from an Apple event called let loose. So that's something you can use. And again, you can make it look more like iOS 17. I have a separate video on that as well. Now iPhone 17 air leaks keep coming along with the iPhone 17 pro. We have an idea of what it's going to look like 
thanks to John Prosser in his latest video. It looks like Apple's going to have a camera bar here at the top that's similar to the Pixel, but also it will utilize the iPhone 16 modem along with that Wi-Fi chipset, which could give it great battery life. So we could have a super thin iPhone. I don't know who's asking for this, but it is something that Apple will have to accomplish if they want to come out with a folding device that's thin enough, but we'll see that probably in September. But either way, with Apple making their own chipset, we should see some very improved efficiencies and much better battery life in theory. Now iPhone 16 E launched and releases this coming Friday. So if you pre-ordered one, they went on sale on Friday. And if we go to the Apple store, you'll see the iPhone 16 E in the United States at 599. That's what it starts at. You can go in and pre-order it now and it's available next Friday on the 28th. Of course, I'll try and get my hands on it as soon as I can share with you the unboxing review and more. Now, as far as releases this week, well, Apple stopped signing iOS 18.3, meaning you can no longer downgrade to that version. We also, of course, have had iOS 18.3.1 for quite some time now, a couple weeks, and yesterday iOS 18.4 beta 1 released. Now iOS 18.4 is launching in April, as I mentioned before, so we're not going to see that for a little while, which means we could see an iOS 18.3.2. Because we'll have a month gap or so between those releases, we definitely could see something there. Also, iOS 18.5 is already in the works, and Mac Rumors has noticed users on its website analytics using iOS 18.5. So all of these things are coming very soon, and that's where we expect the new upgraded Siri. We have very little information about iOS 19 so far. However, in March, we could get the date of WWDC 2025, which typically takes place in June, where we see iOS 19 and all of the next versions of iOS. We're still waiting for some of those features from iOS 18, so maybe they'll get pushed to iOS 19, or we'll have some updates there that we're not expecting. Maybe a redesign. Some people have hinted at that with some of the latest features, some of the latest apps, and even the feature in iOS 18.4 beta 1, if we go into our notification updates here and within our settings under prioritize notifications in the latest beta, you'll see it has sort of a new design language. So this is something that could hint at iOS 19, having a slight redesign or some changes there, but we're hearing very little so far. So hopefully we'll hear some more soon. But at this point last year, we knew a lot more about iOS 18. As far as the overall experience, many people are still staying on iOS 17.7.2 or the latest updates for the iPad. I'm not sure why they never pushed them out to iOS, but many people really like 17.7.2. And based on the YouTube community poll, while many of you like to follow the latest updates, 4% of you are staying on that version. So that's a good amount out of 13,000 votes, and that only represents a small portion of users. So many people find that it works well for them. It's getting them good battery life, it's stable, Calls are working and everything, so they're staying on that version. I really wish Apple would give the ability to downgrade so we can compare side by side, see what it's like and if it really was better. Now, even with the latest beta of iOS 18.4 beta 1, we still don't have battery intelligence. Many of us thought this would be out already, and it's basically just telling us when our phone is done charging. Of course, on iOS 18.3.1, it won't show that, but it doesn't show it on 18.4 either. So at this point, I'm not sure if they're ever going to release it. I don't know that it's necessary, but it is something that's on the Mac that would be really great to see. So at this point, we haven't seen it. Maybe we'll see it in the near future, maybe in a future update with the betas. But either way, we're not seeing it yet. As far as the overall battery life though, well, I went through all of the YouTube community poll content and 66% of you say the battery is the same or better than iOS 18.3. If you're using iOS 18.3.1, I went through every single comment and 34% say it's worse. Now this is slightly better than last week's results with 65% saying it's the same or better. So after giving it another week, it seemed to improve for some, not so much for others, but that's a pretty good number. It's not the best we've ever seen, but that's pretty good overall. Now with battery life, this is Abishek's battery life on an iPhone 11 Pro Max with 77% battery health and iOS 18.3.1. You'll see using about 100% of the battery or 95 or 90%, he got 5 hours and 39 minutes of screen on time, 1 hour and 31 minutes of screen off time. He sent in another from another day and he had 6 hours and 18 minutes. So he went a little bit over 100%, had to charge it, but about 5.5 hours of screen on time with 77% battery health. It's probably close to time to replace the battery, but overall that's pretty good. Now I used it full time on my 16 Pro Max and if we go back over to the battery, let's take a look. I used it on the 16 Plus as well, but on this device, let's go to battery health. 
you'll see I'm at 100% with 130 cycles. You can see more details here with coconut battery, and I'll share the 16 plus here as well, since I use that full time, but it doesn't have a whole lot of cycles. So you'll see under battery health, it only has nine cycles at 100%. But overall using it over the time that I did, the last day I used it, I didn't use it that much. I was transferring things, so it was a little bit heavy on the usage with maps and more. But my daily usage so far has been okay. If we take a look at the overall battery life over the last 10 days, Yesterday was only two hours and 54 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 16 minutes of screen idle time, and I used under 50%. The day before, I only had three hours and 43 minutes and used almost 100%, but I was traveling a lot, it was in the car, it wasn't plugged in, so it varies depending on usage. But typically I would get six to eight hours, no problem, and six hours at 75% usage. So overall, pretty good for me, not phenomenal, but definitely better than iOS 18.3 for me. As far as current bugs, well, the wallpaper dimming bug is still there, even on the iOS 18.4 beta as well. But if we go in, swipe home, you'll see it dims. On the new one, it actually saturates more. So it just depends which version you're using. Many people have a notification bug where notifications are shrunk. I actually had this myself. It'd be shrunk or sort of in the distance, like the animation didn't finish, or it'd be stuck at the top. So that's a little odd. Volume is an issue for some people when notifications come in or they just don't hear it at all. And there's also some stutters and micro stutters or slowdowns. So on the 16 plus, I notice them far more than I do on the 16 pro max, but they're definitely there going into things such as music, swiping home. You may have just seen that there's a little bit of a stutter from time to time. Some people are still seeing call failures on 18.3.1. Now 18.4 beta one could fix that as it has a new modem update, but 18.3.1 seems to have a lot of call failures specifically in India, it seems. Also, some are seeing a standby bug where when it's on standby, it just doesn't work properly. So you would lock your screen, have it go into standby mode, and it just wouldn't work properly. It wouldn't have the different widgets there, and it works better on a phone with the always on display. But on 18.4, it seems to be fixed, but again, this isn't out yet, and so we have to see that updated. And you'll see here the widgets work, and again, this is 18.4 beta one, so hopefully they've resolved it for most people. I didn't have it on 18.3.1, but quite a few people did. Some complain of mail notifications not showing properly, and it seems somewhat to be confusing, or part of the new mail application where it's just a little odd with the primary inbox, I changed it back Back to the list view like it was in prior updates. So I don't really like the new one as I miss a lot of mail that way. I think one of the most unacceptable things that people complain about the most is the keyboard lag. So if we go into notes, this is a new note and sometimes it seems to lag a bit, sometimes it doesn't. On the latest phones, it's not as prevalent, but it's definitely something people experience. The camera bug is still there, at least on 18.3.1, where you go to the lock screen, swipe over, go to the camera, and sometimes it's just a black display. Thankfully, I haven't seen that on 18.4 or 18.3.1 in a while, but it's definitely an issue for some. When it comes to performance, well, the good news is, in general use, most people say it's the best version ever. So if we just swipe, things are smooth going into apps. Of course, you do have those micro stutters. They're gone now. But on the iPhone 11, again, running 18.3.1, it's fine. Things like ProMotion were nice and fast. It's the same in 18.4, basically. Swiping up and down. The animation speed may be a little bit different, but it's very smooth overall. As far as app opening or going into maybe the camera, things seem to be nice and fast there. So really no complaints with that, but it does need a few updates here and there to fix all of those micro stutters and jitters. That's something Apple was never known for and they need to fix that as it's fairly unacceptable and it seems Apple is off track or something is wrong. The good news is the heat of the device seems to be very well managed. This phone is nice and cool. We're in about an ambient temperature of 73 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and the back of the phone is nice and cool. I'll compare it with 17.4 as well, just so you can see with the thermal camera. And you'll see in the hottest point on the 16 plus, we're at about 29.4 degrees Celsius. And on the 16 Pro Max, we're at about 29.8, almost 30 degrees Celsius. So overall, staying very well managed. I would expect the 16 Pro Max to be a little bit hotter since it's still processing the update. So overall, nice and cool to manage. Now, if you're in a very hot environment, that's going to vary. But in general, it's been better than 18.3 or earlier updates for me. As far as benchmarks, well, I ran them on the latest devices running 18.3.1. We'll take a look at two devices here. Now both are running iOS 18.3.1. We have the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 16 Plus. 
overall, the scores are pretty good on the iPhone 11. They're higher than they were in previous updates. So 1755 for single core, 4,161 for multi-core. On the 16 plus, 3,415 for single core, 8,494 for multi-core. So overall, pretty good, what we've expected, and definitely nice and fast compared to what we've seen before. Now, as far as the overall experience and what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Jatbrand9508 said, app opening and closing animations are messed up. iPhone 13, iOS 18.3.1 update just restarted and they're back to normal. Eview said, I'm having this weird bug. Say I'm listening to music and starting a chess game will pause the music. Workaround seems to be just to close and relaunch the chess app. Not the end of the world, but slightly annoying using iPhone 16 Pro. Jim Paget or Paget said, iOS 18.3.1 on iPhone SE3, iPad mini 6, iPhone SE2, and iPad 9th gen. Most stable of all the iOS 18 upgrades so far, battery life is fine for me. Still has a few minor bugs though, such as photos app, text markup when editing a photo and adding text to it, it still does not register changes of color to the text. Text remains black after applying the color. The settings app, green photos or phone, setting still missing from the main setting page, only findable via search or by app section, but no longer displays on the main setting page, though I suspect that's more of an odd feature change than a bug. Ahmed Depto 3194 says, iOS 18.3.1 on my iPhone 15 Pro Max has given me the best battery life all day. ProMotion is smooth, apps open quickly, and Apple Intelligence is improved, especially Genmoji, Image Playground, and Notification Summaries. Ann Voss 4302 said, Overall, very happy with iOS 18.3.1. It also fixed an annoying bug in Apple Maps for me, a Dutch language issue. Battery life seems okay, although my iPhone 14 Pro seems to run out of battery quite soon. At least it feels sooner than my iPhone 12 Pro, also on iOS 18.3.1 zero issues in use of either device. Simon Drew 8641 said, Hi Aaron, I'm staying with 17.7.2 on iPhone 11. Everything is working great, no stutter, no lag, no keyboard issues. I personally have no need for iOS 18 when 17 is so stable. Now with iPhone storage, iOS 18.3.1 is taking up about 18 gigabytes or so. If we scroll down, you'll see 17.44 gigabytes on the 16 plus, and it's 5.57 gigabytes. However, on iOS 18.4 so far, it's taking up more space, 7.05 gigabytes. Now we do have upgrades to Apple intelligence, so that makes sense, but it does use some more storage this time around. As far as system data, well, that varies greatly and goes up and down as needed. So don't worry about that unless you're having so much storage use that you can't install apps. Now, if you've stuck around to this point of the video, I wanted to ask, should I make more short videos? This is a very long video, but many of you like the short videos of these as well. Let me know that in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more short videos, I'll probably start making them. So that's everything with iOS 18.3.1. It seems to be an okay update, but Apple is definitely lacking compared to what they were like before. Something seemed to be wrong. They've taken a long time to get iOS 18.4 released and it seems Apple is off track. However, I do believe they're getting more on track, focusing, getting 18.4 right, and hopefully iOS 19 as well fixes all of that. I know I say that every year, but my hopes are high that this year they'll finally do it and maybe have a snow leopard year where they fix all of the bugs and just focus on that and get it right. Let me know what you think of that though in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.